Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to the R&B Showcase. We have some special guests today. We're here to honor the Dell Phonics. And joining me in the studio, we're going to let you introduce yourself, is Kyle Mack. Hey, what's going on? It's Kyle Mack. We've got Jam and Jeff Wilder. What's happening, Jeff? Good afternoon. Pleasure to be here. We've got a room full of co-hosts. we got the legendary Mr. Tommy McCarthy from Philadelphia Radio. Tommy. Great to be here to help to rock the house with the Dell Phonics. And we've also got on the line joining us from Detroit is the founder of the R&B Music Hall of Fame, where Will Hart and the Delphonics were inducted, Lamont Showboat Robinson. How you doing, Lamont? Man, great to be here. Great to be here. Great to have you as part of the show. And please join us as we welcome from one of the greatest groups in American popular music history, the Grammy Award-winning Delphonics. There ain't nothing like the real thing because we got an original member joining us in the studio. Let's all give a rousing round of applause for the legendary Mr. Will Hart. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Will, I got to tell you, brother, it is such an honor to have you here in the studio joining us here today. I mean, we we go back a little ways, but I mean, all of us grew up with this great music, especially with all these Philadelphia personalities joining us here in Lamont from Detroit, of course. And uh, we want to just uh, sit back and have a conversation. We want to honor you today, honor your group, the Delphonics. I mean, you brought so much, so many great memories to us uh, growing up over the years. Absolutely. Um, I also want to thank you for being a lot of folks don't know, but Wills is such a great humanitarian. He helped us out with our Hold On Education Foundation, came out to shows. Anytime I've called Will, he's just been there, just came out to support, and we really appreciate you. We want to let you know that right off the bat. I appreciate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always, uh, we go back a long way, Tim. You yes, know we do. Mm-hmm. And uh, everything that you do is very positive, mm-hmm. so I'm involved with positive people. There's nothing like nothing like that, man. That's, that's what I'm all about. Come and on. Great, great, glad to have yeah. you with us. And, yes, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit. So talking about that, why don't we just let you just take us back, because so much has been written about the Delphonics. You know, you had the unsung TV series on the, on television but let's, uh, I want to hear from you about the formation of this group. How did the Delphonics come together? Well, you know, we're from West Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I guess it was uh, 1966, 65. We uh, moved just another doo-wop group out, you know, on the corners of uh, Philadelphia. And we ran into a guy named Stan Watson. Okay. And he introduced us, long story short, to Tom Bell, and Tommy used to work for um, used to work for a record company, not a record company, but a record label called the Cameo Parkway. And uh, so we met him, and uh, kind of like, you know, um, got introduced to him. He kind of introduced us to how to actually record professionally, you know, because we didn't know anything about the studio. And Tommy, it was his beginning also, but uh, he had something to work with. And uh, he was driving us to, uh, you know, just actually showing us how to be professional recorders, you know, because he had the knowledge. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, um, so what happened was um, when we met Tom, you know, we, uh, I think it was Tommy and William came up with a song called "He Don't Really Love You." Okay. And Tommy just worked on the music, put everything together, you know, and. Uh, you know, Tommy was like a taskmaster, really, because he knew what he was doing, and mm-hmm. we we didn't. But you know, we learned a lot from Tommy because he was always, you know, get there at nine o'clock. We're gonna rehearse until eleven, and uh, we're gonna start recording around one. You know, mm-hmm. and so you know, it was it was an experience for us because we didn't know anything about the studio, mm-hmm. and Tommy uh, kind of led us into the professional side of recording. You know, okay. and. Um, so, um, you know, we had some success, a lot of success with mm-hmm. Tom Bell. Mm-hmm. Uh, William Hart, Tommy Bell, they were the writers for the group mm-hmm. and uh, had plenty, plenty of, uh, you know, uh, beautiful melodies, beautiful music. And William was an expert at lyrics, mm-hmm. you know, as the world can see. You know, I think he was one of the best. And um, they came up with, uh, we came up with La La Means I Love You. That was our third release. Okay. We came up with La La Means I Love You. And that was like hitting the lottery for the Delphonics because that took us all around the world as far as our music was concerned, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when we really started, uh, you know, working every day if we wanted to, everywhere if we wanted to. We work with all the artists 
that I can think of. I can't think of anybody who we, we haven't worked with, you know, mm-hmm. on, at one point. And uh, it was just a great, great experience working with a pro like Tommy mm-hmm. because he taught us so much, you know. We were like in the studio. And, you know, you really have to love being in the studio mm-hmm. to really stay in there after you record. Mm-hmm. And so Tommy kind of like took me under his wing in that aspect because I, I wanted to be there, you know. So he didn't hold back anything, you know. He let me work on uh, the mixing, you know. He let me work on the percussions or whatever I could do, you know. And uh, so that was that was uh, our start in the business as far as getting our popularity around the world. You know, Tom Bell was, was very instrumental in that. William Hart, mm-hmm. Randy Kane, mm-hmm. and myself, mm-hmm. you know. Stan Watson, can't leave him out because mm-hmm. he introduced us. And... Um, so we were blessed with many records, as, as you know. And uh, that is a blessing because there's so many talented artists in our business. I think it's just from the grace of God, really, whether you're going to be successful. Because there's so many good records, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. And uh, take, for example, uh, La La Means I Love You was a record that we didn't have to really, you know, uh, beg anybody to play that. That was like... Every, all the DJs loved that, so it was like a blessing, you know. Um, and that that's what took us to where we're at right, right now, you know, as far as having music that everybody in the world can know about the Delphonics, you know, and they know about our music, you know. So uh, we're very thankful for that. Now, you talked about the studios that you worked out of. What are some of the studios you worked in? Was it, was it Cameo Parkway at first? Or? No, oh, let me see. We worked. Uh, I think it was Cameo okay. Parkway for mm-hmm. He Don't Really Love You. Okay. That was our first recording. But then we moved to Sigma Sound after okay. everything. Everything after that was Sigma Sound. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joe Tosh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, we worked in New York Sigma Sound. They had a studio there. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. They yeah, had a yes, oh, yeah, well, there okay. was a studio in New mm-hmm. York. And uh, we had mm-hmm. uh, on Vine Street there. Uh, Berkshire. Virtue. 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 Yeah. Virtue, right? Oh yeah, we okay. did. We, we did. We did work. Mm-hmm. We did some stuff in virtues. Right. That was before Tommy. That was, uh, and I guess it wasn't before Tommy, but we we did record in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, a couple of things in virtue. Mm-hmm. And um, so we just uh, let me see. That was Sigma Sound. Then in California, we worked at the record plant. Mm-hmm. Uh, several studios in in California. Uh, we did mixing and stuff in San Francisco. Um, it was, you know, it was a great experience, you know. And right now, you know, I have my uh, home studio, okay, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And what I can do is, you know, just lay down basic stuff, and then I take it to somewhere else, mm-hmm. you know, to get it, you know, really finished and mixed and everything, mm-hmm. you know. But we've been all, we've been, you know, very involved with a whole lot of studios. Talk about your inspiration. You talk about your studios and the songwriting. What is some of your inspiration? Because you wrote that epic masterpiece. Uh, you know, you, Will Hart uh, worked some, wrote some great music. Talk about some of the music you wrote for the Delphonics. Well, um, it was funny. You know, it wasn't really funny, but when but Tom, hey, love, you know, yeah, hey, love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy uh, left us in nineteen seventy three or two. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you know, we were still, you know, we were still recording in the studio, but I had enough knowledge. And I guess being smart enough to keep things going Mm -hmm. the way that they were going successfully, using the same studio, using the same musicians. I was thoroughly taught by Tommy about what Mm -hmm. to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And really, basically, it's just using professional people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and what you can do, you do. And what other people can do, you let them do, Mm -hmm. you know. And so we had had, uh, many, many records after Tommy Mm -hmm. left. That was successful, mm-hmm. and Hey Love was one of them. Okay, right. And um, you know, uh, uh, did several. Did a song called Seventeen in Love mm-hmm. that was successful. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, it was, uh, you know, it, it's been an experience. You know, knowing that what you do is something that the world will appreciate. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, you you want to be humble. I am humble. Mm-hmm. I'm very humble. I know that through the grace of God, everything's happened, mm-hmm. you know, so um, so I'm very thankful, man. Just very thankful. 
You talked about these musicians. Is that the same MFSB musicians from Philadelphia? Same like musicians. Earl Young and all the same? Yes. Yeah. These wow. guys these guys don't get enough credit. Right. Tell you. Yeah. Earl Young. Um, mm-hmm. um, uh, Earl Young is uh, of the Tramps. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have uh, Norman Harris. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Ronnie ba- Baker. Ronnie Baker. Mm-hmm. Come right. on, man. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Ronnie yeah. Baker. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carl, Vince Montana, too. Vince yeah. Montana. yeah, Vince. Carl yeah. Chambers. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, Carl Chambers yeah. and uh, uh, his brother. Um, Roland. Roland Chambers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but these guys, man, they were like the foundation mm-hmm. for our success because mm-hmm. when we had sessions, you, know, we, you could teach them the song, mm-hmm. but then they put themselves into the song. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. right. They were like the creators of what they mm-hmm. did, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they they really don't get enough credit. For they're it, a, they're right. comparable to the Funk Brothers at Motown. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. Well, exactly. I, was like, I was just going to say yeah. that because mm-hmm. you know the Funk Brothers never got their credit, uh, just like the guys in Philadelphia did. Mm-hmm. That's right. And now right. now finally, after all these years, they're all right. finally getting their credit in mm-hmm. Philly. Would, yeah. would you mind describing what the recording process was like uh, over at Philly International? Uh, or Because uh, I know that, uh, we, as we described, mm-hmm. uh, the Funk Brothers, and back in the early days at Motown, they would oftentimes record with the artists in the room, which is something yeah. that is kind of unheard of. Was that something that you guys we did? We did that also. Yeah. We did yeah. that also. Um, what we did was you come in, you have the song that you about, that you want to present to the to the rhythm, and and you go over that. Maybe you rehearse maybe four or five hours, you know, mm-hmm. just making sure they know the music. Right. And they put themselves into the music. So that was mm-hmm. the process. We we rehearsed. They learned the music, and then we recorded the rhythm. So the musicians would be playing live as you guys are singing as well. No, no, no. They we would we would record the uh, the rhythm okay. first. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we would record <laughs> the vocals on top of that, mm-hmm. and then we would record the arrangement. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, let's say like either like La La or Hey Love, how much time would be spent on the recording process between start and finish? How long would an actual song take to record and finish? Mm, I would have to say um, it would probably take three to four days. Really? To really do it. On La La Means I Love You, what we did was Tommy did the arrangement and uh, the musicians learned the music, mm-hmm. but we went into the studio and we did that in like one take, strings, horns, and everything, wow. you know. Right. But we rehearsed well, you know. And uh, that was the one song that we did that on. La La Means I Love You. We were uh, at uh, Sigma Sound Studios. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did it live with the horns and strings and the, and the band, you know, and, and we're singing. So we did, boom, one take. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. But we did rehearse. Right. For, to make that happen. Mm-hmm. But that was the one song that we actually. That was the process of that song, you know. We just did it live, you know. Wow. How wow. important was like the singing, like doing the rehearsals and everything, like rehearsing and then doing the singing part? That was very important, you know. And Tommy really learned, uh, taught us kind of like that rehearsing is the key to all success, really, because mm-hmm. that's why you have that time. You have that time to prepare so you can make yourself. You're never going to be perfect, but so very close, you know, to what you're trying to do. So uh, Tommy uh, would get us at the piano, and uh, this is your note, you know. We could sing, but, you know, uh, you know, uh, here's your note, and we'll make sure you had it. Here go your note, Randy, you make sure you had it, you know. Weigh him the same thing. So we, you know, he was like uh, our teacher as far as... Right what to do, you know. It was very important to rehearse. And uh, he put us on the right track on, with that piano for rehearsing, you know. Right. So that was the process. To have Tom Bell and uh, Joe Tarsia in the studio with you, come I mean, on. come on. Mm. I mean, how much better in Philadelphia on, could it be that, mm-hmm. to have those two gentlemen working with well, you? that's the key, I think, to success. Uh, the better the knowledge that you have about what you're trying to do. Now, Joe Tarsh was an expert he was an expert. Everybody knows that. You know, he knew his craft. And Tommy Bell knew his craft. So then we got to the point where we knew our craft. So once you have these elements together, everybody mm-hmm. knowing what to do, then you use the best musicians in Philly. Right. You know, you don't go and, you know, just use anybody. You mm-hmm. use the best. When you use the best, you usually get the best, mm-hmm. you know. So this was a rule, our rule, 
you know, we just use the best. Mm -hmm. And that's what we continue to do today with recording, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, he's an engineer. Um, what's his name? See, this, it just slipped my mind right now. Mm -hmm. See, that's what happens when you get about 75. You know? <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, Will. God bless you. Yeah, you know? things can go away. But Greg, his name is Greg mm -hmm. Craig. Mm -hmm. White. Oh, Craig, oh, Craig White. White. Yes. You know Craig yes. White very, very well. well. Yes. Uh, yeah. Craig Craig White is the uncle of my best friend, and he actually wow. has he has mixed a couple of my live performances mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Come on, he's yeah. he's How an expert. That? Yeah, mm -hmm. and his, yeah. his studio the studio yeah. at his house is amazing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we we've been working together for years. Mm -hmm. We had projects back in the late seventies together. You mm -hmm. know. You know. So I, you know, we, I'm using, I'm using the best. Mm -hmm. As long as the best will, will do my work, I'm right. going to use the best. So uh, Craig is one of the, mm -hmm. one of the, one of the great, a um, mm -hmm. uh, great, um, what do you call them? Engineers. Uh, engineers, yes, sir. Yeah. Engineers. Why did I know you were going to say mm -hmm. his name? Craig <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes. yes, yes. Yeah. You want to go to the phones? Lamont, you still on the line there? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, any sir. questions for Will Hart in the studio here? No, I'd just like to thank him for, you know, all the music they have did over the last, what, 50 years? Um, 50 years. 50 years, yeah. yes. Yeah, you know, one thing about the yeah. Dell Farm is they didn't sound like nobody else. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. You know, yes. That was one of the things. That yeah. was one of the things back back then, you know, when you heard somebody on the radio, right. oh, mm -hmm. that's the Dell Farm, what the tip takes it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, they have inspired a lot, a lot of groups. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we inducted them in the second class, because mm -hmm. uh, such such a great group, and I look forward to seeing them mm -hmm. one day going Appreciate into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because mm -hmm. they definitely deserve it. Absolutely. I can't, I can't right. understand why we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just can't figure it out because we have achieved all the things that you need to achieve to go in there. I just mm -hmm. can't understand mm -hmm. why we're not there. But, mm -hmm. it's the, you know, we have time. It'll as happen. As It'll as happen. As long as there's time in front of you. Know? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm pushing for it, and the thing about it is that there's no more for you guys to do. You did it all. You, mm -hmm. know, you guys got yeah. Grammys. Uh, yes. Uh, your music has stood the test of time. Yes. And that's the key that I tell a lot of people today. You know, will this record play 50 years from now? Mm -hmm. gotcha. You know, yeah. and uh, and the music crossed. You know, right. you guys are huge over in Europe, you know, all over the world. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes. my head goes off to you guys. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Right. Thank you. Oh, well, I wanted to ask you a question because I – to keep a unit going for so long, it's it's not all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, you know, Randy Kane, he passed away, and he, and uh, you guys had to keep on going with Major Harris. What what was the the temperature of the room? What was what was the thought process uh, when something something traumatic such as that happens? Well, the only thing I can say is when something happens to you and you have a unit, then you know it's always like somebody else that can do what that person did. And uh, hopefully there is, you know, you hope you can find that person. And, um, but the atmosphere when someone, you know, that is like far as the beginning of your career and has uh, participated in your success, when they fall out the room, you know, it's always a, you know, this is a tragic thing, you know. And uh, what happened with Randy was, Randy had, had gotten ill. Mm -hmm. And so he had to drop out because of that. And just so happened that Major was with our record label. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just got together with him and he was fit like a glove, you know? Yeah. yeah. So uh, it, was a, it was a blessing, you know? And uh, he, he he actually was a great help to the Dolphins because what he did was he didn't try to emulate himself in that situation he knew what we needed right and he emulated that you know and so i appreciated yeah. that because major was multi-talented right right yeah, he could sound like a whole lot of people mm. and mm. uh a great a great uh great artist really mm -hmm. so uh um, that's something about major harris um but when something like that happens you know you really have to put your trust in the creator because of the fact that he creates everything and uh Hopefully, he'll make you keep going forward in your efforts. You know, that's that's what I I depend on. That you know, right, I know right. that everything happens for a reason, and uh, there's only one person in control, and that's the creator. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. So then, if mm -hmm. if you need something, mm -hmm. that's the best person to go to. Mm -hmm. You know, and how? Sorry, I was interrupting, but how how much how much? 
Yeah. Yeah. Good, Lamont. I will say this. One thing about the Delphonics, and, and that's a great question that you asked, mm-hmm. is that they sound never changed even to today. Mm-hmm. That sound is still there. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the key to when somebody's being replaced. That's just like my father-in-law, David Ruffin. Mm-hmm. You know, when they brought in Dennis and then they brought in Ollie, that sound still stayed the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. For the Delphonics, and that's that's the test of a group as well. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm glad Lamont mentioned the sound because I wanted to ask, um, was it a conscious decision to come up with the sound of the group when it came to the different types of tones to voices? Because uh, you guys, you guys on record, it's easy to forget that there's only three of you. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. The harmonies are so thick yeah, right. and, the, and, and so and so uh, powerful that you can listen to it and think that, that there's like four or five guys on the record. And there's only three of you. Well, mm-hmm. we were concentrating when we started out. We didn't want to sound like nobody else. We wanted to create our own niche, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is something that we've done, you know. And uh, Wim, myself, and Randy, and also Major, he recorded with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were just constantly trying to keep whatever we had right. that got us famous to uh, to keep it that way. You know, we didn't, we weren't trying to venture out and and sound like something else. You right. Know? Mm-hmm. So this is something that you know that I think is a great lesson to people. If you have something that is unique, and you're a recording artist, you don't want to walk away from that. You know, I'm, I know a lot of recording artists who have had a I ain't gonna name no names, but they had a great career, a great sound, and then let something else come in and mm-hmm. influence them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And right. then they move off into that mm-hmm. and right. lose what they had. Yeah. Well, this is that was never our dream. We always wanted to be different. We loved the uh, Glass Night and the Pips for their motion and and what they did. But we didn't want to be like them. Mm-hmm. We wanted to be as big as them, but different. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Right. But that that was a good example for us to look at. You know, mm-hmm. Little After Imperials. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. You know. So we. We didn't want to emulate them, but we love what they were doing. So we said, mm-hmm. we're going to do something a little different. Mm-hmm. So this is what and we stayed worked. with. And it worked. It worked. Thank God. When you talk about the uniqueness of the Delphonics, not only in the harmony and the sound, but the choreography. You have very unique right. choreography. Tell us about that choreography. Yeah. Who's responsible yeah. for it? Well, that was uh, <laughs> that was my part. That was my part, you know, mm-hmm. because that's something that I love to do. And rehearsing the band. I, mm-hmm. I used to rehearse the band. And you know, that was like my niche, mm-hmm. you know. I didn't have that high tenor voice, mm-hmm. so but like my brother, my brother was fantastic with mm-hmm. his, his vocals, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, so I said, well, I gotta, I have to help this thing, you know. So I, my my help was creating choreography, mm-hmm. the dress, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, so that was my part, mm-hmm. kind of like you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I've never seen nobody has choreography like you though. No. I mean, like I said, it's, it's very yeah. unique, isn't it? Very yeah. unique, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. So so I got that from you. Got that? Yeah. I, well, I got that from. Um, mm-hmm. Gladys Knight in the pips, really, because I saw how Bubba moved, mm-hmm. but he was so different. Right. I didn't want to be yeah. like him. Right. So I said, I want to be different too. Mm-hmm. So that's how I, that's how I created, you know, mm-hmm. what yeah. I was doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, those videos are still out there. Yeah. I, you get yeah. to see them every mm-hmm. once in a while. They'll right. pop up on mm-hmm. on the internet. You know, you guys, on, right. especially yes. like off the old High Lit show. There I was, was ready to say that. A couple yeah. of great mm-hmm. videos of you guys performing on on those shows mm-hmm. and others too. Yes, Soul yeah. Train stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. you're right. Um, sometimes I look at uh, on the internet they have some stuff come up from Soul Train mm-hmm. songs that I you know I said man I, I can't even believe we're moving like that you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, 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 but it was, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was good mm-hmm. it was good it's really yeah. good you know yeah. and even today with you know your performances today I still see that that choreography you know yes, yes. there aren't many groups that are still dancing today either you right. know oh, but you still great. you're still doing it you know yeah, yes, it's a great yeah. thing you put on an excellent show with, your, you. with your group today Thank you, you know Thanks and so as much. well as being one of the authentic voices, Jeff has got a, all those albums. You got to where's some of the albums you have, uh, uh, Jeff? He's got a whole bunch he of does. them over there. Um, the, um, of course, you know I have the original. My, my absolute favorite right here. Mm-hmm. Live and kicking. Live and kicking. Kick. Live, Live and kicking. Kick. Kick. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. This, this right here is one yeah. of the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I yeah. think yeah. that you guys did together right. as a group right here. Right. We um, that was an album that we did. Uh, I think that was after Tommy left. Yeah, that was later. Stan right. Watson mm-hmm. and Norman Harris worked with you guys a lot on this, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, Norman Harris, uh, you know, he he wrote a couple of songs. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, he was he was happy enough. I mean, he was gracious enough to let me produce these songs. Okay, because I you know I just had mm-hmm. the the knowledge of what we were doing, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we didn't walk out of that. So mm-hmm. Tommy wasn't on that album right there. No. I don't think. No, I don't think so. That was later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was later. Well, in later years, you all took you all took leads too. That's a fact. Lead parts, yeah. you know. And you know. Tommy, Tommy encouraged me mm-hmm. when we first started out. You know, man, you're gonna sing. Uh, you're gonna sing ain't that peculiar because mm-hmm. he wanted to do that arrangement. Mm-hmm. I said, man, I was sweating. I said, oh man. <laughs> I, I really never had the desire mm-hmm. to be a lead singer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, and. Uh, but and you won the Grammy for it, didn't you? Come on. Didn't I blow your mind this yeah. time as you come starting on. the song off, come right? On, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see how God works? <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Man. I yeah, want to you know. know. I want to know where do I get a suit like this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they, yeah. they still make this? Yeah. yeah they still Bobby make Crass it. Brothers yeah. down on South Street, right? <laughs> I bet you. I yeah. bet it was. Benny I Crass. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, because we did yeah. dress from out of there. Yeah. yeah we did 937 South. That's right. Store of the Stars. Even the album tracks. You know, I love like Lover's Concerto you have on yeah. here and and the Alfie of course which was a Burt Bacharach tune right. but the magnificent job William does with that and you guys at Come on, man. Yeah. which is Come unbelievable on. you know gotta be one of the greatest voices of all time really truthfully yeah. that's, that's, let's that's keep it real that's you know, that that's voice is, and nobody yeah. sounds like William Hart either nobody right. you know sounds I mean? like William Hart you know, he has his very, own sound very unique distinct yes. you know? clear yeah. you know yeah. so. and what we used to do with uh, you know who we emulated kind of like was Little Anthony, because mm-hmm. we loved his diction, you know, mm-hmm. the way that he pronounced things, you know. So Wim loved that, mm-hmm. but he didn't want to be like that, but mm-hmm. he wanted to you mm-hmm. know, have the same type of effect, you mm-hmm. know. Right. So uh, that was mm-hmm. that was kind of like who we looked at as mm-hmm. far as the vocals were concerned, you know. But we didn't yeah. want to be like anybody. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to do our own thing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's what happened with us, you know. And mm-hmm. that's, I'm keeping it in that same mm-hmm. mode, you know, as far as, you know, the way that we perform, the way that we studio work or whatever songs we write, I'm just going to continue to do it. I don't know any what other way to do it. Mm-hmm. So what is it like to still be able to do this? Like your your group, you still perform regularly. Right. And so it's so it must be a really blessed feeling to be continue to be able to perform and have people flock to your shows. You're right. You're right. It is a it is a blessing, you know, um, I, I really can't explain it other than to say that we have not changed what made us successful as far as, you know, our performance was concerned. So we knew that, you know, we're successful here, we're going to stay here, you know. So this is a, just a matter of, you know, weathering the storm as far as, you know, these groups coming out. We have a lot of groups coming out now that maybe guys used to work for me. Right. <laughs> so... They think that they can be the Delphonics, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like and mm-hmm. I mean they they you know they they performing out there. What is your feeling on that? I I, I think you know, it's like stealing, you know. Yeah, Even, exactly. See, it's not right. No, it's not see, right. I, yeah. I don't see it. One thing about me, I might do a lot of things, but I don't steal. Right, I don't right. take from others because I know that when you do that. Mm-hmm. You're causing you know you're causing the sin really you know mm-hmm. you, right. you shouldn't have to do that. No. You know? You so, perfected the formula, and they tried to steal it from come you. On, you know, come something on. like that. Mm-hmm. So you you take a group that's doing that. So we're, say if I'm getting ten five, or I'm getting fifteen, mm-hmm. they'll do a show for maybe fifteen hundred or two thousand. Mm-hmm. So that makes that makes the promoter say, "Well, damn, I can I can use the name." And pay these guys just a little bit. So that's how they get over, you know. There's no yeah. integrity to that. No, right. not at all. I don't encourage yeah. it, you know. No. And then if you're going to do a tribute, do it the right way. Do it, do it. Show some respect. Well, see, that, that is the you thing. Know. People right. aren't even calling it tributes anymore. Right. right. They're just trying yeah. to see just the group, flat which out is not the right. Come on, man. No, yeah. we don't support yeah. that at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't support yeah. it. No. But, um, we, or we're, the reviews. Or, or the word review. Or the word review. It just totally just takes away from what those guys done. And like you said, they undercut them. For fifteen or two thousand dollars, some of them called me. Well, can we be inducted? I said, I only induct the people that were on the record. Are you on the record? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now, did Randy Kane sing lead on any of the records that you guys did? Um, he sung a part on uh, uh, "Let It Be Me." Okay. That was really the only okay. thing that Randy mm-hmm. sung on, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, his voice. I tell you what. His voice was so unique that the sound that he played a, a big role in our success, you know, yeah. even though he didn't do any lead. 
mm-hmm. with the harmony that we made, mm-hmm. you know, I could hear his voice real well, you know, and he kind of like, you know, had a, you know, had this effect in our harmony sound, you know. Right. So he was very important, even though he didn't sing much lead. And then plus, he was a pretty boy. <laughs> you see? Uh-huh. Randy Crane was a pretty, uh-huh. Randy Kane had, Every group, had all, yeah. <laughs> every group has one. Every group has one. He had, he had all, all the girls. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And so the girls had to come to see the Delphine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, every, each one of us had our role, you know. Mm-hmm. So. And the same thing was with Major, too, as well. Yeah. Major, too. Major, right. too. Mm-hmm. Major was the coolest guy in the world. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. One picture that I really, really like, and I uh, hope I'm not out of sync, is when you guys are standing up underneath the marquee at the Apollo Theater. I just mm-hmm. think that's just one of the coolest pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of like we made it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you can make it at the Apollo, you can make it anywhere. Come on. And, right. You know, when I see mm-hmm. that and you guys standing there and, and the names that you guys were on stage with, who was on the show with you guys, right. that just says it all. Right. Yes, it does. Yes, mm-hmm. it does. Yeah, to yes, work there or the Uptown here in Philadelphia, uptown, I mean, those yeah, were the, yeah. that was the top of the pile with a big fat smile when you got in, mm-hmm. you got up on that billboard. Mm-hmm. And when you worked at, when you worked at the, well, the Apollo Order Uptown, and you work with every artist that really had any music out, you know. Right. That's why I say that right. we probably work with everybody. Otis Redding, we, mm-hmm. we work with all these guys, you know. Right. Billy mm-hmm. Stewart, Billy Stewart used yeah. to take us out with them echoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Load them out. So, yeah. Will, I'm, I'm, I'm really good friends with your son, Jamal, right. and uh, he invited me to a show not too long ago of yours, and right. I was very, very uh, pleased and enthusiastic and enthralled by your guys' performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who are the guys that you perform with now? Who's in the, who's in the Delphonics today? Well, Joe Branch, he's out of New York City. Mm-hmm. He has that beautiful tenor voice. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was very good. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, um, and um, Dr. Salam Love, mm-hmm. which... You know, which he's no longer with us at this time. Okay. But uh, it's Dr. Salam Love and Joe Branch mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. myself. We just carry it on like mm-hmm. that. Awesome. It's mm-hmm. a great thing. It's yeah. very good. Well, hope that you keep on keeping on, Will, keeping this legacy alive um, and just keeping the sound of Delphi. You know, we need this music. Come you know, yes, so, we do. so keep it going. Absolutely. Keep it going. And we're, and we're, we're so proud of you, that. man, for doing what you're doing and staying, staying on it and uh, keeping it going. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to be part of the R&B Showcase here today. Thank you very much. Absolutely, brother. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Great to have you here, Will. Great to have Great you. Great to have you. Want, you. Want, 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 you good work. We want to thank all of our special guests, Lamont Showboat Robinson from the R&B Hall of Fame, the founder. Thank you, Lamont. Thank you. And uh, Kyle Mack, recording artist, and of course, uh, radio host in his own right. Yeah, thank you very much. You so many, we'll talk about it later. You're in so many different places now. <laughs> <to> make <laughs> things happen. <laughs> Another DJ, Jam and Jeff Wyman, on many different the stations man. in Philadelphia. And the legendary Mr. Tommy McCarthy. Always an honor to have you here with us, uh, Tommy McCarthy. Great to be in the house. Another but stars. Nothing but stars. (laughs) (laughs) And we want to thank, let's give Will a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Will Hart. Thank you, man. This is such an honor. Thanks for being part of the show. Thank you, Tim. I'm Tim Marshall, and thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase.